Syndrome is a freedom fighter who wants to make everyone super enough to create an equal society by giving his technology to the powerless majority. What plotlines would we see in a dark Pikeser universe? Inside out of a person with PTSD and a substance abuse problem. Or any mental illness really. Intrusive thoughts would be an interesting thing to see. All the people who were left behind in Wally -E and had to survive it out. I mean when the humans first left. I'd be surprised if everyone was able to afford to head to space. A Cars prequel where we learn what happened to all the humans. I still like the idea that the Cars universe all takes place in the Toy Story universe. All the cars are model cars, part of an estranged billionaire's collection who keeps them in an airtight elaborate showcase setup. Driven by the need to keep them mint condition, he never interacts with them keeping the cars in constant state of life and in turn, forgetting they are toys. Monsters, Incorporated. But they collect screams from kids they torture and kill. So basically if Randall was successful. That and possibly to reduce the empathy that would cripple an entire economy. If they're dangerous, it's okay to capitalize off of them, ahem military industrial complex. Edit. To clarify, I'm not saying the Monsters Inc. world is a military industrial complex, I'm just saying that the same reasoning is why people don't have ethical problems with Mix Earl. Sid gets his own torturous Toy Story spin-off. He realizes toys are alive and immediately gets to work becoming a horrifying sexual deviant. Reminds me of a story I read here that after seeing Toy Story 2 in his teens, some guy bought a Jessie doll and would jerk off on her face and then fantasize about her freaking out once he left, but her being unable to clean up because then he'd know she was alive. This raises the question are sex dolls alive in the Toy Story universe? Since Toy Story 4 established all it takes is a child's imagination to give life, if a child stumbled across a sex doll, obviously by accident then just thought it was a giant Barbie and played with it, humanizing it, giving it a make-believe identity would this give the doll sentience? Lightning McQueen hits rock bottom after a major crash during a race and gets hooked on low-grade gasoline with fuel additives. I can imagine it being like. McQueen gets cocky in one race and severely crashes. He gets salvaged and reconstructed, but no longer fit for racing and kicked out. He goes crazy not being able to race and quickly goes through his savings through burning racing alcohol and getting busted doing reckless driving. Due to his behavior, all his friends leave him. He hits rock bottom and ends up joining a local street racing club. With heavy nose injection and other illegal modifications, he rises up the ranks but realizes that it wasn't a life for him after the latest gang fight. Fast forward several years later, he lives in a quiet town as a mechanic who goes by Doc. In the distance, a lost race car wanders into the town. <laughs> Toy Story, once the toys become landfill. They see that they have finally been thrown away and live in this trash heap. Imagine a kid dies of cancer and they're buried with their favorite toys. Trapped in a coffin with their kid as they slowly lose sentience one by one. Jesus Christ. Oh, they'd lose sentience way before then. As the kid dies they feel something inside them vanish, what passes for their soul bleeding from their mind. They fall to the floor, unthinking and unmoving, with no desires, no comprehension. No real thoughts of any kind, yet still aware. As the deep sadness and love and emotion of the family members touches the toys they have fleeting moments of lucidity. Enough to realize what is going on before they slip into terrible blankness once more. As the coffin is lowered and the toys forgotten the shroud of oblivion descends. Yet every time a family member remembers the love the child had for the toys, or a cherished memory of playtime, they are roused from their eternal slumber once more. Trapped in the coffin with the decaying corpse of their kid, still unable to move, they suffer just enough sentience to understand once more what has become of them. With each return they begin to yearn for the cold embrace of oblivion, so they don't need to remember or watch the empty eye sockets stare. They pray for the humans to forget the child, as if he never existed at all. Yet, as the last memory of those who knew the kid fades, a final brief moment of awareness comes to them, and they see their kid once more, smiling down on them, skinlessly, and know that in the end, they were able to make their kid happy. Jiri's game where an old man is playing Russian roulette with himself. 
it should be interspersed with scenes from his life like the intro to up as he keeps adding more bullets. Wife leaves him a bullet, kid dies bullet, and so on, but he always hits a safe chamber until finally he puts a round in all six, and the screen goes black to credits. Post credits he's sitting in a hospital bed with a destroyed face and blind, so now all he can see are his memories. A Finding Nemo type film starring Dory, but she is a much more elderly fish now, and her short-term memory loss has gradually worsened into severe dementia. Over the course of the film, Nemo helps her recollect the best memories of her life before she smiles and finally passes on. Old Dory stares up at the camera as a wave of lucidity washes over her face. 42, Wallaby Way, Sydney. I remember Marlon. The camera zooms into her pale white eyes and past as we get a fast slideshow of her life flashing through her mind as the words I remember repeat over and over, until we get a final picture of an old Dory, old Marlon, and young Nemo hugging like they're taking a picture. The camera pulls away as we watch Dodie's eyes dilate, then the light leaves them. The camera keeps pulling back as we see a middle-aged Nemo close old Dory's eyes. Goodbye Aunt Dory, I'm glad you got to remember one last time more of a Disney one, but I came up with this idea with some friends a while ago. It is the origin story of Walt Disney. Set in an old mental hospital, where various heroes and princesses are locked up, and all have differing levels of psychosis, delusions or other problems. They are all looked after by the warden, movie title, Mr. Disney who exploits them and sells their stories to the nations as children's stories and fairy tales. Bell Bestiality. Aurora Heroin Addict. Snow White Multiple Personalities, Seven Dwarfs. Ariel lost her legs in an accident at sea, and is convinced if she can just get back to the ocean, she could make a deal with the monster that took them to get them back. There were more, but I can't remember them all right now. Toy Story 2, but Jessie wasn't lost or outgrown by the daughter. Instead, she was the only witness to the child abuse and murder by a heavily alcoholic father to Emily. The plot revolves around somehow getting evidence to the police, with a major point being Jesse even able to talk about it. Imagine all the toys around the world that bear silent witness to the horrors of human life. That lamp is the protagonist as a secret serial killer. My name is Desk Lamp. I'm 33 years old. My house is in the northeast section of Richmond, where all the villas are, and I am not married. I work as an actor for Pikesur Animation Studios, and I get home every day by 8 p.m. at the latest. I don't smoke, but I occasionally drink. I'm in bed by 11 p.m. and make sure I get 8 hours of sleep, no matter what. After having my rechargeable batteries switched out and doing about 20 minutes of calisthenics before going to bed, I usually have no problem sleeping until morning. Just like a baby, I wake up without any fatigue or stress in the morning. I was told there were no issues at my last tune-up. I'm trying to explain that I'm a piece of furniture who wishes to live a very quiet life. I take care not to trouble myself with any enemies, like winning and losing, that would cause me to lose sleep at night. That is how I deal with society, and I know that is what brings me happiness. Although, if I were to fight I wouldn't lose to anyone. Mr. Incredible, his perfectly well-bred ruling family dynasty, and the other supers, run a world government where the super-powered minority uses their powers to suppress, subjugate, and slaughter the rest of the world, as they please for their own personal benefit. They make the laws, enforce them, but don't follow them. The people are like slaves or serfs to their supermasters. Dissenters are outright killed, tortured, or mysteriously disappear. Syndrome is a freedom fighter who wants to make everyone super enough to create an equal society by giving his technology to the powerless majority. But ultimately is thwarted and brutally killed after being ganged up on in public by the Incredibles family and Frozen. Teaching everyone the lesson that you can never be on the same footing as a super unless you were born one, and freedom only exists for the powerful, no matter how hard you try or how smart you are. However, the fight for humanity's freedom isn't over. Syndrome's close friend and longtime admirer Incredibles 2 spoilers Evelyn Deaver manages to convince the majority of humanity to rebel against the Super's world dominance, using the power of mass media and the freedom of expression. Together they start a world revolution that aims to reorganize the world power structure and use the newly invented technology, along with the works of Syndrome, 
to fight a war on a scale never seen before. However, they are easily wiped out due to their inherent inferiority, and the supers use the very same technology Evelyn and Syndrome, created to once again put humanity in shackles and controlled by the supers forever, though now secure with mass surveillance, advanced weaponry, and a pro-regime media that only shows superhero shows movies and pro-superhero news, as directed by the Incredibles and their allies. Like and subscribe for more funny, interesting, and scary r slash ask reddit videos.